The excitement of actually working in independent films is something that most filmmakers want to do. They want to take their story, write their story, direct and make it something successful in the Australian cinema culture. Today we're going to be speaking to my cousin, someone that I'm very proud of, and he's going to be telling us about his new TV project. <laughs> Hi, this is Joey Buzzatil and you're listening to the Secret Men's Business Podcast. On today's show, we're going to be speaking to Lee Galea, he's my cousin, and he's going to be telling us about his movies that he's made and the upcoming TV series that he's about to produce. Lee, how are you? Hi, Joe. How are you? <laughs> Good. How long has it taken us to speak? Oh, my God. This is like attempt number five. This is this is like trying to get Madonna to talk, I reckon, talking to you. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, I, I'm very proud of you. And I have been – I've been meaning to reach out to you so I could interview you. And I was just, you know, waiting for the right time. And I think that the reason why there's been so many attempts is because this is the right time. I think that what – you know, the talk that we had before we started recording – is that you've got, you know, the right things to say and to talk about. So before we start, um, I know that some of my friends know you because I know that you're friends with them on Facebook. Um, do you want to just give the audience, the listeners, a bit of an overview of what you do? Okay. Um, I'm an independent Melbourne filmmaker. Yay. Yay. <laughs> I um, Yeah, I've been doing, I start, I, yeah, I do, I've been doing feature films since 2009. And um, yeah, we're um, yeah, and now I'm, I'm moving on to a TV series. So I mean, yeah, I just I get a lot of I get a lot of actors who haven't haven't had the opportunity to act. I give them a little first break, and we and we have fun, and we and we enjoy the process. So. Wow. I mean, I've never really asked you this question because I think I've just you know we've just accepted that you are in the family and you make movies. I've been to your some of your premieres, but. How did you actually get into writing and directing? Like, what was your what was your 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 aha moment or turning point to say this is what I want to do? How did you get into that? Well, it was the film that you've seen, uh, Monster Pies, that I wrote when I was fifteen, and I just, I you know, became a you know, you know that I've always had an obsession with film, which is what I got from um, our grandfather. Mm. Uh, Leon, who was obsessed with movies, and I just, um, yeah, and I just, I thought I was going to do acting because I was always being a bit of a performer, but um, ended up writing stories. And then, you know, I was a closeted 15 year old, wrote this love story, thought, didn't really think much of it, and thought, oh, you know, whatever. And then um, ended up doing it as my second film. And yeah, it just, it was just one of those, just like, I, I had tunnel vision. But we weren't, like, our family wasn't like an arts family. Like, there yeah. was no artists and stuff. So it was like, you know. Um, well, it's not that we weren't an art family, because you're right, Leon, our granddad, was an artist. It was more, I don't think our family encouraged. <laughs> it wasn't really, a, our family didn't really encourage people no. to take that risk. No. You know? I mean, so how did your family, how did you negotiate uh, that? They, my mum and dad <laughs> used to talk me out of it all the time as a kid. Um, and, you know, I loved doing my shorts and even showing it to our grandfather because it was, I was, I knew how much he loved movies. So I was so excited to kind of screen something in his, in his kitchen. Um, but no, my mum my and dad were always like, you know, don't even bother. It's a, it's a, it's a, you know, back then, you know, it was, it all seemed very um, American. American and very blockbuster. Yeah, like you're not going to be Steven Spielberg. That's what the my dad. Well, was. they did. They probably didn't understand, you know, like independent movies because they probably wouldn't have watched those movies or gone to the well, cinema to see even foreign movies. So yeah, well, it was actually independent films that really shifted my attention to directing and like um like some of the you know Tarantino stuff and Rodriguez and during that mid. 90s um you know uh art house cinema that's how it all started where you could get two dollars and make a movie but what helped was um you know was the digital age so i was coming i was coming into you know even though i got to work on film but um with shorts but if it wasn't for the digital age i don't think it would have been harder in this country and stuff and i yeah. didn't have any backing or support and 
But it was uh, by the end of it, like when Monster Pies, you know, had won an award and, and was doing really well and, and got a distributor in America, it was like I, I could see my mum shifting focus and going, and then she'd go to the hairdressers and tell me how she'd be sitting <laughs> in the chair getting her hair done going, um, yeah, my son is a director. He's a director, <laughs> you know, like, and it was good because it went from, you know, yeah. You, and yeah. you sort of, and you sort of, I, I sort of see that as an education. You know, you're educating <laughs> people, including myself, because I don't know, you know, I don't know anyone that does what you do. So that's how I learn. Mm. You know, can we, let's go back to when you were 15. Did you, you know, did it? Did Monster Pies come out of you easy? Was it an easy transition from your head in onto paper? It, it was me in classroom, and we were studying Romeo and Juliet, and. I just went, why isn't there a boy, boy version of this? And I, I just, it, I, I was writing it in this book that I was, it was like porn in a sense, because I was, I was kind of like fantasizing what it would like to be falling in love, having a boyfriend, because there were th things I hadn't ever done. And I was writing, it was actually quite graphic compared to what ended up being the movie. <laughs> <laughs> but I was writing it every night, like secretly, in the dark, in my room, and then hiding it in between my mattress. Just, and I, I remember like, you know, writing, I, I would write all over the cover of the book to make it so that if my brother found it, he would not he would just think it was a scrapbook. Was it like, I was trying to disguise it and um, no one ever found it. No one ever knew. Did it, did it help you? Was that a, um, did that actually cause or lead you to coming out or was that way later? I was way late. It was about, I came out like four years later. And then right. I didn't really tell my, so I've got a twin brother and he, we always talked about movies and what I wanted to do. But he actually said to me last night that he didn't know I wrote that film until much later on. And it was when I had made a first feature and, it, and I was kind of stuck on what to do. And, and he goes, oh, do you have any other stories? I said, oh, I've got this story I wrote when I was a kid and it was like two boys in love. And because my brother's straight and he went, oh, you know, why don't you do that? And I thought, well, if my straight brother's telling me, <laughs> yeah, movie. so I ended up doing that. And, um, and, um, and the whole monster pies thing was from when we were, me and him were little, we used to make these mud pies to feed monsters thinking <laughs> they'll eat that and not come in the house and eat us. So oh, it was just so the evolution. And I was going to say, and your mum got to be my one of. Well, my I was going to, I was going to actually, you just read my mind because I was going to say that an amazing thing about you as well is that you're really resourceful. Like you know, you you really pull together that everyone that you know or everyone that can help you to make something so you don't become, you know, is it is that is that because you you can't get funding or is that more because you <laughs> like to stay at a level of because I think that it's more authentic the way that you do it it's more of a family feel rather than a big Hollywood production yeah well I think any independent filmmaker has to be thrifty and and use what they can um and also you know being you know European, we're, we're good at like <laughs> tight, being tight. <laughs> yeah, and um, but so we're also we're also well, well networked. I mean, if you use all our family, you basically can make a big, you know, a big Hollywood movie with everyone. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, and I have used um, family members in different capacities, like my, you know, even my sister's been an extra and 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 little things. But with you, when I invited your mum to be in a Philtophonic, it was. I really wanted to hear the Maltese, like, because we're Maltese, I wanted to hear the language spoken in one of my films. It was something I've always wanted. And um, it was really cute because, um, yeah, the, cute, the the scene's really cute. And I... Um, yeah, she loved it. Watched it. Have you watched it yet? No. you Remember you told me you are going to give me a copy of it. So yeah. I, I'm waiting sort of... I sort of sometimes enjoy waiting for things to be on streaming so I can pay. I, I like doing the proper thing. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, um, I wanted to then. Can we, you know, when you're saying that it's an independent filmmaker, it's hard. How do you feel that 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 struggle in a way? I'm going to call it a struggle. I'm sure you don't, but you know, ob obstacles and struggles of getting money, of getting everything together. Like, how has that affected you with your mental health? Because oh. you know, the reality. This is a mental health podcast, right? So, has it been? Is it tough, like, to do to go down that path versus? getting someone to pay for it, getting the Hollywood, 
you know, bandwagon to jump on. Like, tell us a little bit about the independent stream. Um, yeah, I mean, it's definitely something that weighs on your mind when you're trying to make something and you're trying to be creative and you don't want to have to cut corners and you, you, you want to fulfill your vision, um, as, you know, as, you know, arty as that sounds. But um, I, it was harder in the beginning to make people believe in me yeah. and, and to invest and I um it wasn't until Monster Pies where the lead actor Lucas said I'm gonna let I'll I'll lend you some money to finish the film, and that gave that was a different responsibility when it was someone else's money, not just my money, and um and then from that film being just what it was, which is just crazy, um I met people who were like, hey, we want to see more of what you can do. Here's some money. That's good. And they left me alone. I didn't even have to like itemize. Like if you get money from a funding body, you have to itemize like every cent. And they were just like, we trust you. Here's the money. And I'm such a, like I would tell them everything. And I was like, oh, I'm going to buy the, and they're like, just, just do it. Do it. Um, but yeah, it was, um, and also, you know, having a film that can even generate some royalties can help as well because you can kind of then self fund your own work mm. and, but um, yeah, it was definitely a struggle. And so, were you able to cope? Like, are you, did you go through anything that was like, you know, did you get anxious, or did you go through periods of like, oh my god, this is not going to happen? Or do you oh. find, or were you able to be stable the whole way through? Because I oh. see you, I see you as a very calming guy. I, I mean, like, unless oh, look, I, 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 I try and act calm on set, you know, because it's it's nothing worse than the director who's just ah. Uh, um, but I, like my first film was really stressful. We had no money. We had, I remember when I was filming it, I had a dollar, which I had it in my pocket and I just <laughs> kept, I kept it in my pocket. So I knew I had a dollar, but that's all I had. And, um, my twin brother worked on it for five days and he got so stressed out that he couldn't wait to get upset. And he ended up going into a new job and, um, and it, and and the guy who he hired him said, oh, you must be really, because it was a huge job. And he was like, hey, you must be really nervous first day, you know, first week or whatever. And he's like, no, nah, I'm just glad not on, <laughs> on my brother's set. But we just, we, um, it kind of just would fall into place and we would, we would screen the film or we would do something to raise money. And people were really patient with us, cameramen and stuff. And we would pay everybody. And, and I thought, you know, um, but yeah, it does. It does weigh a lot on your mind, and it does, you know, you know, can stress you out. And I just try and, and I think even with my brother seeing, because I try and internalize the stress, mm. <laughs> and I even like sometimes I'll break out in psoriasis, and I think that's from me like yeah. holding it in. But he would stress out because I'm not stressing out, but I am stressing out. But I'm just like. Bottling. Well, may, maybe because you're twins, you're actually doing the opposite. So that complements. It's like at people in a relationship when your partner, if something's like burning, your partner's not reacting, then you react because your partner is, or something's happening. So he was watching me being really calm and that was making him panic more because yeah. then, you know, things were, like it started raining and he was like, what are we going to do? It's an outdoor scene. And I'm like, don't worry, we'll shoot it inside. Mm. And, uh I was gonna. I was gonna say. How did you? Is that how you learned? Is, so you, did you learn? Did you go to school or did you learn naturally? Because I don't. I get it. Sorry if I don't know this. Oh, that's all right. I mean, I I did I did a, a, a course and I did a short film there. But I was a lot of it. I learned at school um, the roles of you know who, who like you know um, who is what you know like the dop is the cameraman and the assistant director assist you know and this and the sound you know so i learned that stuff um but it was a lot of it was self-taught a lot of it was trial and error of just making mistakes and trying again and doing it again and and and, and then surrounding myself by like-minded people like i co-write with um you know my mate anthony who um you know we just, we just kind of on the same page and we, and, and he's, and he's, we wrote Filterphonic together, but he's also edited all my other work. And it's like, 
I've never had a writing partner like that where I could um, just, what would happen is he'll tell me like, what's wrong with it? And I'm really good at problem solving so I can fix it. But sometimes I don't know there's a problem until someone points it out. Right. Yeah. And that's good. It's like, a, it's a good collaboration. And yeah. I think it's good to do that because it's fresh ideas. So like with, with that, like, how do you come up with your, you know, with your ideas? Like you're, you know, working on a TV show, which we'll talk about in a minute, but are you drawing everything from real life or are you, are you just a really amazingly creative and imaginative person? <laughs> um, it's like, well, with the films, it was a bit of mix. It was a mixed bag. Like Monster Pies definitely was a lot of me. Mm. Um, Filterphonic had stuff about like my mum passed away. So we, we incorporated that a lot in the film um, of like just showing the mum slowly getting sick and dying and stuff. Um, and then my newest film that I'm halfway through because of COVID um, was came through me having half of it was like part of my like midlife crisis. Yeah. Me. Um, but with the show, it's the show is completely different. Like I feel like it's a hundred percent everything me right a lot of my experiences yeah okay it's a, it's a queer show it's you know a gay yeah, show. Don't, don't don't talk about that yet because I, I want to talk a bit more about this because i feel that you know because everything's evolving so quickly do you feel a, you know do you feel pressured that you need to represent the new queer culture in a way that or or i guess do you feel pressured that there's going to be more more criticism in this in this climate in this time or, or are you just being free to do what you want i mean doing a gay sh uh, like a gay film back in well we were shooting it nine years ago yeah because um, it would have been different then i guess it was nine years ago this in this halloween coming so yeah. like in a week or whatever and it was what we were doing then you couldn't really like it's like a, it feels completely different like mm. um you know, we have like non-binary characters and I wouldn't even know what that was back in those, that time. And, um, and it was so heavy. And now I'm like, I want to do comedy. I want to, you know, not everything has, because, you know, a lot of gay cinema and it's, it's also Monster Pies, there was a lot of, you know, drama, a lot of, you know, there was depression and mm -hmm. there was like... Um, like the struggles that we've been through. The struggles of like, you know, not... The family not accepting sexuality and not accepting your, you know your own sexuality and you know and hiding and all that and i was like no i don't want to do any of that like i just want to yeah well know. that is that do you think that's a reflection of where you're at with your life like you said you just you called it a midlife crisis but i feel that you are now representing this freedom that you're feeling rather than oppression um i feel like the show like well, yeah, tell us about the show now, I guess you can. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, with the show, it's more about the time we're in and what people want to see. I feel like no one wants to see like, you know, uh, yeah, a, heavy, a, heavy, a heavy, a heavy, you know. heavy, heavy sort of, you know, we want to be, you know, we've, we've done a lot of the, the struggling. We don't want to be feeling like we're fighting all the time. Yeah. And I think also with COVID and everything, like we, we need a laugh as well. Yeah. So, um, and I'm like, you know, I try and be funny where I can in real life in general. And, and I, uh, yeah, like this film kind of, sorry, this show, I've kind of pulled out parts of what I didn't do with Monster Pies in terms of the comedy part. And I've carried it over here, but I've gotten to modernise it. And, you know, um, I can't really answer your <laughs> midlife question about the other film, but that's, that's the, I mean... That's a whole other thing, but the show is definitely uh, it's called Single Out, and it's 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 definitely modern, and there's a lot of swearing, <laughs> a lot of f words and c words, which I've never used. Uh, my films have been quite clean, mm. and I I'm I'm just letting it rip. I'm just like I don't care anymore, you know. Like this is just this is how me and my friends talk, you know. Yeah. We're, we're, if you know, can can you? I know you know. Can you give us like an indication of is it like anything else that's been out there, like even in in straight uh, TV, or is this brand new? Uh, as I like, can, I compare it to something. Yeah, like can you, is it like a Friends? Is it like is it like a? It know? is an ensemble show. Like there is um, six 
kind of leads. Um, but it's, I mean, I wouldn't compare it to Friends, but um, <laughs> um, I, I, like when I pitched it to the actors when I was casting, I said, oh, you know, if you've watched anything like um, Sex Education, you know. Yeah, like, okay. Um, but then sometimes I describe it as like love Simon, but if if Simon actually got to have sex, you know, like yeah. and not wait a whole movie just to get one little kiss at the end. Um, so, yeah, but it, it, it's... I, I don't know. There was a there was um, a couple of shows recently I've seen quite modern ways of telling stories, and I was just like, it felt like more like little movies, mm. and I was like, ah, oh, you know. And so I kind of tried that. Yeah. You know. I mean, I mean, I mean a, TV these days is more cinema. It's like a cinema anyway. Like I'm, I'm so impressed with the way that TV has become so full on like it's not like the olden days when you, you had like one or two rooms like friends now it's like multi-locations and it's multi-camera and it's it's everywhere yeah a hundred percent i i i was always scared of television and i i couldn't understand how you would even attempt to write an uh, an episode and how you would follow everything and the whole thing was just like how am i going to do this but i think the idea i think it was me challenging myself doing something new doing something I have no idea what I'm doing, but I've done a little bit of research and it, it, it seems like what I've done is similar to what a lot of modern, modern writers are doing where they're not following the old television structure because mm. there's all like, you know, and they're just doing something fresh and I'm, it's definitely fresh for me. And the gratification I get is the, how the little, so it's six episodes, but you, it's like making like little movies and mm. 20 pages each and you when you're writing a film you're you're writing to get to the to the end so to wrap it all up yeah. or to get to that you know and I I get that in there, you know after 20 pages I get like a little Well it's, it's funny when I first asked you to be on the podcast which was a while ago you you were just starting or you were in the process of it so now you're talking like you I can tell you love it like Back oh. then, you were very oh, it's new, and I'm trying to get my head around it. So, uh, has you know, what was there? A, was there? A, is there a big difference in versus <laughs> TV versus movies? Like, or are they very similar? Um, I mean, definitely the structure is different, but um, the writing, I don't know. I, I do feel like it's I can be a little bit more myself and be a little bit more. Is that because you got six hours versus an hour and a half? Um, well, we're not even that long. We're only 20 minute episodes and there's only six of it. So there's right. no, it's the length isn't, isn't maybe only going to be 20 minutes difference, but, um, I think, it, I don't know. I, you know, I think because with all my films, we're following kind of mostly one or two main characters. And cause this is like, we can walk away from a story, focus on someone else for an episode and then go back to it. It's it's different. It's just yeah. a different feeling, but it's also um, non-linear. So we we repeat different things from different angles, and and it, and it's and that's also made it more interesting to write. To go, oh, how can we retell the same story but through someone else's eyes and show how it can be different? And so it's it's, it's yeah. yeah. But we, I'm, looking, I'm looking forward to seeing the, like for it to be finished and hopefully to be on something like Netflix or Stan or something and then to see it. Um, in regards to, like, equipment, right? Like, in regards to now, like, smartphones and the camera quality and yeah. people just thinking that they can do anything and everything, how has that changed the independent film scene in regards to, you know, people just trying to make films or short films on their phones or on equipment that, that we never probably thought of years ago? Yeah, I mean, I... I mean, I would never do it, but I think it's great. Like, I think, um, I mean, this is a really crappy example, but like I get a lot of t tapes from actors for mm -hmm. auditions and it's just like really high quality because they're using their like 4K phones or whatever. Well, the new iPhone 12 has got the most, apparently it's like way more powerful than any camera that's on a normal, you know, everyday person camera level. So it is pretty yeah. amazing that, you, you know, it's got three lenses in it. Yeah. So, you know, um, I know for myself doing this, doing this, yeah. I have learned so much about editing that I now have this desire to make a short film, but I probably won't. But it's just this weird thing that when you dabble in it and you play around with 
because you, you're right. Like the the equipment and the and the um, editing thing is so scary when you start that it turns you off. But once you persist and go through it, I actually found that I was I was actually quite shocked how much fun I was having. So yeah. do you think that more people are going into into that sort of creative uh, world? Definitely, I've noticed like with the actors I work with now, they all dabble with um, um, making their own little shorts at home and and cutting it together them, themselves. So that it's like when they're at home, like in lockdown, they're bored. They, they make these little self, and it's just them and a camera or a friend. And it's really cool. Like, and they want to learn so much. They don't just want to act. They want to come on set and, you know, yeah. learn about everything. So yeah, um, I think that there's, there's this, you know, watching Hollywood and people become more than just one thing has inspired people. Um, just for, for a last question, like yeah. COVID, you just mentioned COVID and it's it's definitely changed the landscape. Like did what you know is that, did you know that Daniel Andrews created COVID in his lounge room? I have to cut this. <laughs> Do you, you know, in regards to um what what's happening, like with cinemas closing down and you know, things change. What's your what's your take? I know that we don't know, but what do you feel is gonna happen with cinema moving forward? Oh, I, I it's, yeah. I mean, I know people really are hanging to get back to the cinema. I am. But I do think it's going to get affected. I, I, the thing I kept thinking is, is cinema going to turn into what theatre is? You know, when you go to the theatre, it's not real. It's really just a, like, when you, I'm talking like Regent Theatre. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the city. It's a kind of a big deal and you make a big thing of it and you, it costs a little bit. But I'm like... Because before it was just like, ah, oh, I'm bored. Like I know you go to used to go to the movies once a week, and I did as mm. well. And 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 it, it's it's. I just don't know. I just don't know if it's going to change. Mm. Do you don't think that it's going to actually just transfer onto streaming? Like, as in more film, more streaming. Yeah, like I have this feeling that it's because I saw that a lot of American cinemas are closing, like for, like some really big chains. Yeah. Going, oh my god, that's huge! I just thought, well, maybe it's going to transfer itself onto a streaming platform. Like, I just bought a new um, 4K Apple TV, and it literally turns my daggy old Sony television into this amazing thing. You know, it does it. It does it for me, and I'm thinking, you know, I could quite happily watch my movies on this big TV. So I'm just wondering if, you know, and especially with also Netflix and the budgets that they use, that it could transfer. Because before COVID, we were, you know, really going towards those blockbuster movies, which was coming becoming a bit boring. Yeah. You know, the, the Marvel movies? Yeah, yeah. So I, do you think I there think, will be room for cinema? Or do you think like, something else? So, so, say that again, that last bit. Well, do you think that we will still have room for cinema if there is going to be this long-winded COVID distancing thing? I mean, like, you know, we can't go to the cinemas. It'd have to be like gold class all the time because you can't sit next to people. Yeah, I definitely think cinemas will change the structure. Like, they might pull out seats and... Yeah. Not... Because I don't like being crammed up next to people in a cinema. Like, if I smell someone next to me, I, I can't concentrate on the movie. But, um, yeah, I, I, I do think cinemas will have to up their game. And, I mean, I know a lot of Hoyts were converting into luxury and yeah, yeah. recliners. But it just might just, mm. yeah, I don't know. I, I mm. definitely think... What about the industry? Do you think that's going to, you know, do you think that TV and you know, movie making is going to be different. Because I know, I spoke to a friend yesterday who's actually making something in Hollywood and she was saying to me that the actual COVID rules are so tedious. Mm. You know, it's just tedious to make sure that there's less people wearing masks and, and all that. So what do you think? Do you think that's going to happen or do you think that we will get through this? I mean, I definitely think COVID will eventually go away and we'll get through it, but I... <laughs> Yeah, the industry for the next two years is just, it's bad. Like, yeah. we're going to see less bigger movies. Um, yeah, it's and it's such a shame because it's, you know, I live and breathe movies and stuff. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, I but I also think, especially, like, the fact, like, you know, I wrote my show during that second lockdown because I had nothing to do. I think we're going to see, like, an influx in, like, 2023, 2024. Yeah. Like, of... 
a lot of creative people who were so, you know, depressed or repressed or whatever and going, ah, here's, yeah. here's what I did. Yeah. You know? I, I think that, you know, the funny thing is, is that I, like, for example, I know there's a short film festival coming up and it's at the drivings. Right, so I think there's going to be creative ways for us to do stuff. I, I actually, I actually think that the, I think the theaters are going to be the ones that are going to be harder hit because that is a live interactive thing. But cinemas can pull chairs out, or even put you know, they can put plastic barriers up or something yeah. if people want that. But I I was probably just thinking that technology wise, that people may find that staying at home becomes a more normal thing compared to, you know, yeah, maybe more. Going, like uh, Theatres, maybe more, you know, like community screenings in parks, you know, like I, I just, yeah, I definitely think we're, we're, it's a different, I mean, people were already staying home a lot anyway from cinemas because of Netflix and things like that, making it so much cheaper and, and you don't have to leave your house, but it's a second hit. And they had to like in America, especially they had to like, you know, up the prices a bit and do like luxury theaters yeah. in order to find money somewhere else yeah. because ticket sales were so I mean, I read on Thursday, this was when I knew it was sad, was a cinema, a, a, is it ACM? Yeah, ACM yeah. was, they were renting the whole cinema out for $90. <laughs> so you could get a whole cinema and invite all your friends for $90. So that's, that's when I that's thought, great. okay, the, day is, the days of cinema in America may be over for the time being. Yeah, but they, they're such a huge, um, the, they, I mean, the films that they release, they make a lot from themselves. Mm. But unfortunately, they can't with COVID, and even with the European, you know, just just second more second waves happening. Like it's, yeah, it's definitely a big dent on the industry. And and but I think it when you have something like this, it pushes people to get creative. Yeah, I, I just, it's just it's just you know, this, I just look at it as once upon a time we had silent movies. So it's just, it's just another one of those evolutions. Yeah. Lee, thank you so much for talking to me, my cousin. Thank you for sharing. And we look forward to your TV show. What was the name of it again? Single Out. Single Out. So we look forward to Single Out. So when everyone listens, just remember that was my cousin that made that. It's so awesome. thank, I don't know. So it's hopefully, awesome. maybe we can have you on the show when it comes out and maybe you can get one of the lead actors to come and be a guest with us. Oh, they would love that. I was I was in a Zoom meeting with them today and I was like, hey, I'm going to go promote the show. And they were so happy and we yeah. were reading episodes four, five and six and they're all just so happy and such nice people and I am I just can't wait to do it. And I'll be updating everyone on Instagram with it and, yeah, it's great. Thank you. All right, thank you, everyone. You've been listening to the Secret Men's Business Podcast. The podcasts are out on Monday and Thursday, so look out for them. Now, don't forget to hit the bell and the subscribe button so you get notified when new podcasts are out. Have a great week, everyone. Bye. Mm-hmm.